So this is officially video number two, where we're gonna go ahead and have a look at both the direct method and the indirect method for preparing cash flows. So if you're currently studying the drafting and interpreting financial statements exam with the AAT in particular, then this is going to help you out. So we're gonna go through some examples that you've never seen before because I've created them from scratch. So let's go ahead and switch over to the desktop now so I can show you the example. Okay, so let's switch to this question now. So here we've got a question that's saying, company overview, ABC Limited has provided the following financial information for the year to the 31st of December. So we've got cash receipts from customers of 250K, cash payments to suppliers and employees of 150K, interest paid, income taxes paid, sale of equipment, purchase of new machinery, dividends paid. We've got a cash balance brought forward at the start of the year and our task is to prepare the cash flow statement using the direct method for the year ending the 31st of December. So how are we gonna even start with this? Well, essentially when we've got the direct method that we're dealing with, which is different, very different to the indirect method in terms of layout, and it's really important that you know the difference there, the things that we're gonna be focusing on are essentially operating activities. So what cash flows do we have from income and expenditure through the normal operations of the business? So if you ever see operating activities, that's all we're talking about. Sometimes referred to as like OPEX, so operating expenditure, um, operating income. And it's basically whatever's happening in the business in the day to day. So that'll be like cash receipts from customers, um, payments, etc., interest paid, that sort of thing. Um, and then we've got cash flow from investing activities, which is going to be where we're selling equipment and we're buying equipment, etc. And then we've also got cash flow from financing activities. So where we've got loans and dividends and all sorts of things. So let's start writing this up. So at the very, very top here, what we're going to have is a line that says cash flow from operating activities. So I'm just going to add that there. So the types of things that we want here, as I said before, are basically what expenditure and income that we've got in the day to day running of this business. So I wouldn't say that dividends are day to day. Um, you need a dividend voucher um, in order to prepare dividends and, and declare dividends. Purchase of new machinery, that's not going to be day-to-day -day happening. Um, sale of equipment, again, not day-to-day. -day. We've got income taxes paid and interest, cash payments and cash receipts. So I would say the top four there would be your typical operating expenditure. So let's pop all of those below. Okay, but by the side here, we're going to just add a little pound figure here so that we can keep a tally. So sometimes students find it difficult to work out which way round the figures need to be. So let's think about this logically. If we've got receipts from customers, that is going to be a positive. So we've got £250,000 there and let's also make that like that. Okay. And I'm just going to make this a bit shorter so we can see it. And then we've got cash payments to suppliers and employees. So if our receipts are going to be a positive, our expenditure is going to be a negative figure. So we've got minus 150,000 there. Next, we've got interest paid. So this will be, you know, it could be bank interest paid. It could be loan interest paid. Um, but that's going to be a negative. And then we've got income tax paid. So that's going to be 20 pounds okay now our total net cash um which is the net cash that we've received from operating activities is going to be the sum of all of this so if we go ahead and add that there that is going to be seventy five thousand pounds so if i put that there we've got seventy five thousand pounds and it's a positive figure because our total income is more than our total expenses. So next, what do we have? Well, I would say that we've got cash flow from investing activities. So of all of these above, I would say that the purchase and sale of equipment is going to be investing activities. So we've got the sale of equipment and we've got the purchase of machinery. So 
if we've received income from the sale of equipment, that's going to be a positive figure. And our purchase of machinery is going to be a negative figure. You guessed it. So just like we had a net cash provided by operating activities, we need a net cash that's been used in investing activities, which is 20,000. And this is a negative because the total purchase is higher than the sale of equipment. So finally, we've got cash flow from finance and activities. So the only one that we've got left here is our dividends paid. Now this is money going out of the business, so it's going to reduce our cash flow. So that's negative 15,000 there. And there's nothing else there that needs to be taken into account. So our net cash from our finance and activities is minus 15,000. So then what is our net movement in this year? It turns out that we've got an increase in cash and cash equivalents. So sometimes you'll see that referred to as cash and cash equivalents. So the reason we've got an increase is because if we take 75K minus 20, minus 15 there, but you can see those highlighted. Well, let's just make those like that so you can see them. That's going to give us 40,000 pounds positive cash inflow. Now, what else we need to do when we're preparing a statement of cash flow that sometimes it's easy to miss out. You've done all the work and you got this far and then you forget that we've got our cash brought forward at the beginning of the year. So that was £30,000. So if we had £30,000 at the beginning of the year and we add £40,000 that we've received in the year net overall, then we're going to have £70,000 that's being carried forward. So all we need to do is change this here and that's going to be 70 because that is going to be that figure there plus that figure there. So our cash balance carried forward, or when you say at the end of the year, is £70,000. So that is the direct method different to the indirect method. So I'm going to end this video here um, and I'm going to do another video for the indirect method but as always give it a thumbs up if you liked it so that other students can receive the video and make use of it also and I'll catch you on the next one.